The reason why Jesus blesses you is so that you will follow him to the next step he has for you. Dr. Tony Evans says that next step isn't about you at all. It's about the people God wants you to help. He wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing as you follow him. This is The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans, author, speaker, senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas, and president of The Urban Alternative. God wants to bless his people, but there's a point to his providence. And Dr. Evans will tell us about it today as he takes us to the book of Luke, chapter 5, for a fishing story. Let's join him. An employer one day sent out a memo to his employees to let them know that there was a United Fund Drive and he wanted all of his employees to participate in the fund drive. The word got back to the owner of the company that there was this one employee who was not going to participate in this fund drive. He said, I hear there's a problem. He said, yeah, I don't want to participate in this United Fund giving drive. I know it's for a good charitable purpose, but I don't want to participate. The employer said, well, then we have a little dilemma, don't we? Because you don't want to participate and I need 100% participation. Option number one is you can participate. Option number two is I can relieve you of your responsibilities so that I have 100% participation. The employee said, I'll participate. The employer said, well, why are you now participating? He said, because nobody ever quite explained it to me like that. <laughs> how you hear things and how you understand them often affect what you do. When it's explained a little different, sometimes we catch it a lot better. Today I want to explain as best I can why God wants to bless you. Now we know everybody wants to be blessed. Everybody wants to be blessed. It, it is the in Christian word. I want my blessing. How you doing today? I'm blessed. But I want to answer the question why God wants to do it in the first place. Because if we can ever connect the what with the why, perhaps we will understand this concept of blessing a little bit better. In the well-known story of Peter and the capturing of fish, Jesus has come to the Sea of Galilee, also called the Lake of Gennesaret. He sees two boats, verse 2, lying on the edge of the lake. The fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. Jesus gets into the boat, which was Simon's, Peter, Simon Peter, and asked him to pull out a little way from the land. He sat down and began to teach the people from the boat. So we basically have a Bible study. Jesus calls for a Bible study and he pushes the boat out from the uh, shore where it had been docked, the fishermen had come in from their work, to create a distance so that he could speak, teach, preach, sermonize, so that he could give spiritual truth to the people from the boat. So he's preaching his sermon and the people are listening to the greatest preacher and the greatest teacher who has ever existed, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Now the sermon is over. The service has ended. It is time for the benediction to be given. And Jesus, when he had finished speaking, verse four, said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. We have started with a generic sermon to the multitudes from the boat. We have now gone from a sermon to everybody to an instruction to somebody. We've gone from a message to the masses to a message to the individual. Peter, it's one thing to come to church and hear a generic message for everybody. It's a whole nother ball game for the sermon to be over for everybody and you get a message with your name on it. It's the difference between hearing 
the word of God preached to all and a word from God spoken to you. What Jesus asked Peter to do contradicted his experience, contradicted his knowledge, contradicted his history, contradicted his background. Let me use another word. Contradicted his instincts. In Peter's mind, his history, background, and knowledge had given him enough to be able to tell the son of the living God he was misinformed with his instructions. You, you, Jesus, you don't know this field. I know this field. You stick to preacher, let me take care of fish. He gives him this instruction. But out of respect, Peter says, but, because you asked me to, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to show you I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to give you some respect, master. So, he pushes out into the deep. When they had done this, notice that, when they had done this, not when they had a meeting to discuss it. When they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish and their nets began to break. Verse seven, so they signaled to their partners in the other boat. So this is a big company. They got Peter, James, and John, and then they got other partners. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat for them to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that the boats began to sink. Verse eight, when Simon Peter saw what happened, fish breaking nets and sinking boats, he fell down at Jesus' feet saying, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Now what made him tell God, Jesus, go away from me? What made him say how sinful he was? Verse nine, for amazement had seized him. So what amazed him? The blessing. The blessing so blew his mind and the minds of his companions at the catch of the fish which had been taken, he was so overwhelmed with the blessing that he says, depart from me, I am a sinful man. Let me explain why God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you so you can discover that he knows what he knows. And he wants to bless you so that you can come to the realization that in his presence, you are a sinful man. He wants you to understand his righteousness, his holiness, his purity matched against your sin by your blessing. See, most people look at their blessing as a confirmation of how good they are. I must have been real good to be blessed like this. And that's not what Peter said. Peter said, I must be real sinful to be blessed like this. I must be real sinful. Now, what was his sin? I don't, I don't see where he did any great sin. Oh, he did. <laughs> he said, Jesus, you don't know what you're talking about. We fished all night. That's a sin. When you tell God he doesn't know what he's talking about, that's not like a compliment. That's a sin. You don't know what you're talking about. But we're going to placate you. We're going to give you a little religious stuff. We're going to just, we'll row out there. It says he was amazed. Why was he amazed? He was amazed because he didn't think nothing was going to happen. At least nothing like that. Not, not just breaking nets and sinking boats. You know, God really does want us to know how different he is than us. Listen, whenever in the Bible people really came face to face with God who had a heart for God, they saw their sinfulness. They saw their sinfulness. Isaiah said, woe is me. I am undone. See, when God manifests his goodness to you, we're talking about a blessing there. We're talking about a great catch of fish. It's not to show you how great you are. It's to show you how different you are than he is. 
that the sin of even questioning his word because it didn't fit our intuition and our instincts. History, background, no experience. It says Peter was seized. He was enraptured. He was caught. He said, depart from me. I am not worthy to be in the same vicinity as you because now I know who I'm dealing with. I'm not dealing with just a polite God. See, see, there may be some folk in here who came to church today to meet a polite God, just, a, just somebody, a nice deity. And you don't understand that yet we're not even in the same ball game. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As high as the heavens are above the earth, that's how different I am. And I will even show you that by blessing you. By blessing you. So one reason God blesses you is to let you see how much he really knows. He really does know what he's doing, even when it doesn't make sense. Second reason he blesses you is so that you can see that he and you are different. He's different than us. And his purity reigns, which reveals our impurity. I am a sinful man. Depart from me. Now watch this. This is sweet. Verse 10, and so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not fear, from now on you will be catching men. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. Dr. Evans will talk about how Peter responded to that invitation when he continues our message in just a moment. Right now, though, he's here to share a word with us. Dr. Evans? I want to come to you personally today to ask you to consider a special year-end gift to the Ministry of the Urban Alternative. Your generosity will help us to keep not only our broadcast going, but will also help us in the other aspect of our ministry, training people how to be kingdom-minded as individuals, as families, to develop church leaders, and also impact communities through our social outreach, the National Church Adopt the School Initiative. All of these combine to make up the Ministry of the Urban Alternative, and your generous support will help us to not only keep them going, but make them stronger. In a world that is uh, having all kinds of challenges, God's perspective needs to be brought to bear, and graphically so. We're committed to doing that if we have the help and support to get it done. Thank you for considering us. And if you can help us out during this holiday season with a year-end contribution of any amount, we'd like to send you the new 20-message compilation we're presenting on the air right now, The Best of Tony Evans 2016. It's our way of saying thanks for your investment in us, which enables us to continue investing in you. But we can only make this offer for a short time longer, so visit us at TonyEvans.org right away for details on the Best of Tony Evans 2016. That's TonyEvans.org. Or call us at 1-800-800-3222. Our phone center is open 24-7. One more time, that's 1-800-800-3222. I'll repeat all that information for you later on. But right now, let's get back to today's lesson. The third reason God blessed them. He blesses, so number one, you get to know that he really does know. Number two, you get to see who you are in the face of who he is. But number three, the reason that God blesses you is so you can be a blessing to somebody else. Remember the definition of a blessing? We gave it a numbers of times. Here it is. A blessing is enjoying, experiencing, and transferring the goodness of God in your life. If there is no transference, you've prostituted the blessing. And that's the problem with this emphasis on blessing today. The problem is not that there's an emphasis on blessing. is they define it only in terms of what I get. God bless me with a new house. Bless me with a new car. Bless me with more money. Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. Nothing wrong with God blessing you with that. But God's blessings are always designed to have a transfer element. And if there is no transfer element, then what you have done is prostituted the term. God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you so that through you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. 
That's why one of the greatest prayers you need to pray when you ask God to bless you, which is a legitimate prayer, to ask God to bring his favor and goodness upon you, is to let him know how you're going to use it also as a mechanism of transfer. Jesus knows more about Peter's occupation than Peter who's been working the occupation all of his life. Jesus has never been a fisherman, yet he knows more about where fish are hanging out than Peter does. And now he says, I'm going to use your occupation, because you know how to catch stuff, and I'm going to let you do what you did with fish with people. He uses his natural vocation as an opportunity for ministry. I'm going to make you a minister, because you're going to be catching men like you caught fish. Now watch this now. It says in verse 11, if it wasn't so serious, it'd be funny. He says in verse 11, and they left everything and followed him. Now, I'm not sure I would have rolled like that. <laughs> you know, in my carnality, in my flesh, I think if I had nets of fish that were breaking the net, Boats that were sinking because Jesus knows where the fish are. I would have offered him a, a percentage of the company. I would have told Jesus, 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 you can have what percent of the company you want. How much of the Zebedee Fishing Corporation do you want to have? And you don't have to work that hard, that hard. You don't have to work hard. When we come to work in the morning, just tell us where the fish are. That's all you got to do, G-Man. Just tell us where the fish are. I would have I would have made that a monster presentation to Jesus. I wouldn't have. Look, Jesus would say, follow me. I would say, Jesus, you follow me. Because we can build something here. I can use you. I can use you to build my company. I can use you to build my wardrobe. I can use you to build my transportation. I can use you to build my future. I can use you to build my retirement. And that's what's going on under the name of blessing today. People want to go and use Jesus to keep the nets full, the nets breaking, and the ship sinking. But Jesus flips the script. Jesus said, I blessed you so much so you would follow me, not so I would follow you. The reason why Jesus blesses you is so that you can succumb to his lordship. So that you will follow him to the next step he has for you. You know what I would have been doing in my flesh and in my carnality? I would have been discussing my condo on the Galilee. It's time for me to build a second home on the Galilee. All this fish, biggest catch of my life. I would have been discussing 401s and 403Bs and I would have been discussing investments and CDs and mutual funds and I would have been discussing all of the new opportunities that had come to me personally because I had the biggest catch of my life. But verse 11 says, they were so impressed, not with the catch, not with the blessing, but they were impressed with the blesser. They were so blown away with Jesus Christ that Jesus said, follow me, and they said, let's go. And they left everything. My question, has God's blessing caused you to follow him? Or are you spending so much time counting fish? How many fish did God give me today? God sure been good to me today. Are you spending so much time counting fish that you've forgotten the one who knew where they were located? Now, can I ask a question? I got a question. I got a question in closing. Because this bothers me. This one bothers me. What about all them fish? <laughs> this bothers me. This bothers me because I'm, I'm struggling with this because they, they got the biggest catch of their lives. And they left everything to follow him. 
Did he bless the fish for him to throw the fish away? I mean, they left everything. What about all these fish? Well, the way fishermen make their money is they catch fish, sell it to market, get the money, go fishing again. The Bible says that the disciples went around with Jesus with a bag of money. That they carried the money. See, Peter is married. Peter has a wife, the Bible says. So Peter has a family to support. The question is, how am I going to feed my family? His mother-in-law lived with him, the Bible said. How am I going to take care of my family, my mother, pay my house, nowhere, and follow Jesus? How am I going to do that? May I use some sanctified imagination? May I suggest to you that God blesses you in order to provide for you the mechanism so he can use you for his purposes by funding his purposes by means of his blessing. That they were able to have a bag of money because there was a hoisting of fish. There was the biggest bonanza because God was getting ready to use them for the biggest ministry so they were able to start out with a bag because while they left the fish behind they did not leave behind uh, the sale of the fish so that they were able to carry on their ministry and pay their bills and still serve the Lord. God is not asking you serve me and not pay your bills serve me and not take care of your responsibilities serve me and not be able to feed your family but I'm going to bless you so you can serve me I'm going to bless you not so that you have less time for me I'm going to bless you so you have more time for me I'm not going to bless you so you can't pray I'm going to bless you so you now you know the power of prayer I'm not going to bless you so that you can't spend time in the word I'm I'm gonna bless you because you know when you spend time in the word, you're gonna get a word that's gonna bring a greater blessing. I'm gonna bless you so you can follow me. So God wants to bless you, but he wants to bless you for more than the blessing. He wants to bless you so you see how much he knows versus what you know. How holy he is versus how sinful we are. He wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing as you follow him. If you're ready to experience the greatest blessing of all, being spiritually reborn into a whole new life by asking Jesus to forgive your sins, log on to TonyEvans.org right now and click on the link at the top that simply says Jesus. There, Tony will tell you all about what it means to be a Christian and walk you through everything you need to know to start your brand new life. You'll experience Christmas like you never have before. Check it out today. Today's lesson was titled, Why God Wants to Bless You. And you can hear the additional material we didn't have time to bring you in the full-length CD that's included in our current series, The Best of Tony Evans 2016. As I mentioned earlier, all 20 messages in this collection are our gift to you when you support Tony's ministry with a contribution of any size. But be sure to contact us right away since this offer is only available for a short time longer. And again, we'd appreciate it if you'd include a generous year-end gift so we can launch into 2017 without having to cut back on our radio outreach and other ministries. Just drop by TonyEvans.org where you can get all the details and make your donation online. It's also a great place to find faith-building resources from CDs and DVDs to books and Bible studies. They're all 35% off through the end of the year. Again, that's TonyEvans.org. Or you can call our 24-hour resource request line at 1-800-800-3222 and let one of our staff members help you. If you took a survey on who is the most famous Christmas character of all, do you think the majority of Americans would come up with the right answer? Join Dr. Evans tomorrow as he focuses on the only celebrity who really matters this Christmas time. The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans is brought to you by The Urban Alternative and is made possible by the generous contributions of listeners like you.